You know, despite our best efforts, prayer can turn into a chore or some mundane task that we have to check off the list. In the same way that Moses found himself in the middle of the wilderness, dry, empty, and lifeless, we can actually find ourselves in a very similar place when it comes to prayer. Like we pray, but it doesn't feel like our prayers are doing much. It feels very blah. And like the wilderness, it feels dry. If you've established a consistent prayer life, such dryness may be something you run into. So let me say this, your prayer life is a crucial component in your relationship with God. And Jesus rightly says, God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Prayer with the God of life should result in life. It should be growing, organic, and full of life. So if your prayer life is dry right now and isn't going anywhere, here are some ways that you can continue to grow in prayer amidst the dryness. Way to grow? Number one, continue to grow through God. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse one. Now it came to pass as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Jesus' response holds a very important truth that we can embrace today. If they said, Lord, teach us how to pray, and Jesus answered them, can't we ask Jesus the same thing now? So today, we can ask God for wisdom on how to pray. Remember that prayers are individual conversations with God, and He is the true teacher. So if your prayer life is dry, pray, God, why does it feel dry when I pray? Am I doing something wrong? Breathe new life into me. Teach me how to pray again. You see, if people wanted to learn more about God, they have a lot of different options. They could attend Bible college, seminary, sit at church and learn from their pastor. And from great teachers, they can learn all about the Bible. And while it's beneficial to learn from these people about God, the reality is that God alone is the teacher of prayer because prayer is communication with Him. Other teachers can't teach you exactly how to have a personal relationship with God. You have to establish your own relationship with Him personally, and it must be between you and God alone. Think about it this way. How can someone be your friend? What would they have to do? In order for people to accomplish the task of being your friend, is there a specific formula or a specific combination of words that need to be said to you? The answer is no because then anybody could repeat those same exact words to you and then you'd be forced to be their friend. So in the same way that it takes more than a combination of words to be your friend, it takes more than just repeated words to build a relationship with God through prayer. So learn from God on how you can grow further in your prayer life. Pray, God, teach me how to pray. How do I grow closer to you? Way to grow, number two, continue to grow through scripture. The Bible has many different verses that talk about how you should pray. Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This verse tells us to pray with an attitude of thankfulness. Luke 6, 28, Jesus says, Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. This verse tells us to pray for people who spitefully use us, or in other words, Pray for the people who hurt us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-3 through three. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior. This verse tells us to pray for all people, and that includes politicians that we don't agree with or strongly dislike. It says to pray for them and to give thanks for them. Yeah, that's a command from God that we either obey or disobey. And these are only a few verses about prayer, but know that the Bible has a lot more to say about prayer. So as you learn to pray, read God's word and pay attention to passages that mention prayer and look at the prayers that are recorded and see if you can pray for those same things. Way to grow, number three, continue to grow through consistency. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The key to building any healthy habit is to do it continually. So just because it feels dry to pray, don't stop. Pray without ceasing no matter how it feels. In the Christian life, seasons of dryness are normal. Honestly, when it comes to living the Christian life, there's many different kinds of seasons. Seasons of trial, seasons of learning, seasons of loneliness, seasons of love, seasons of pain. Pray for the strength to continue in your prayer because as you pray through the seasons, you are fulfilling God's will for your life. So if your prayer life is a little dry, keep going. Please continue to grow. And just because you've prayed for some years, there's always room to grow. Prayer should always be growing and be filled with life because in prayer, we connect to the God of life. So learn through God, learn through scripture, and learn through consistency. We hope this helps and never forget, Jesus loves you. Thank you.